Hi everybody, my name is Lindsay and today we're going to be talking about how to gain salvation and why we should and what happens, how it, how it works when we gain salvation and we're saved through Jesus Christ. This is for people who don't know about salvation, maybe you're considering becoming a follower of Jesus or even you may have already been saved and you just want to know a little bit more about how it actually works and um, this is great if you're bringing people to God um, and you're bringing people to Jesus and it's also good for us to know because I remember when I got saved there were a lot of things that I was confused about and um, I wish I'd have known better um, it, and I just feel like what I'm going to present to you today um, God really put in my heart and it's going to really help everybody that becomes saved or even if you're, um, you've been walking um, with Jesus already and have become a new creation in Christ that this will still help you in your walk. So let's get started. Um, just so you know, I do have, I have started making scripture worksheets. What they are, they have all the scriptures that I go through in these videos. And um, they also have some questions that help deepen your understanding of each study. So if you ever want one of those, um, my email is in the, uh, in the description. And so just email me and let me know that you want those scripture worksheets so that you can deepen your study um, with, these, with these Bible studies. All right, thank you again for joining, and let's get started. So first we're going to start um, with understanding why we need salvation. So we, um, when, God for, when God made the first humans, which were Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve were actually without sin. Um, but when they disobeyed God and ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they let sin and evil into the world, and that's how we... Um, being Adam's descendants, being of his seed, are all born in a sin nature, and that's why we all have, you know, we, we sin naturally. Um, and the Bible also talks about us acknowledging that we are sinners and that we have sinned, because um, there are going to be people that don't believe that, you know, we um, are evil or that we don't sin. Um, especially by, not by nature, but it actually, the Bible teaches us that we, we actually are born in a sinful nature. And even as children, we can see that, um, you know, we, we do sinful things that we just don't know better as children, but it, it's in our nature. Um, so in Acts 16, 29 through 31, as well as Romans 10, 9 through 10, it talks about these um, us being sinners and that we need to understand that we are not deceive ourselves and saying that we're not also Romans chapter 3 22 through 23 and 1 John 1 8 through 10 well in saying that we are sinners um, the wages of sin is death and this is stated in Romans 6 verse 23 and it's it's um, you know it's it's not hard to understand why um, even here in this in this earth in our life here in society we are punished for what we do wrong so if we commit a crime we go to jail we we have a sentence um, and that's just how it is you know you do something there's gonna be a consequence with that and um, so in Exodus 22 through 17 it talks about the Ten Commandments and these were just ten out of so many commandments um, that the law that God gave us through the law. The law was given to Moses and it was actually um, given to show us that we are sinful and that we are not able to be perfect um, and therefore everything we do or not everything we do but when we sin, every sin that we commit, it's punishable by death. Um, and so, you know, we we are separated in, from God in the way that we sin. And but but God knew that we couldn't we couldn't be perfect. You know, um, in the Bible it says that we fall short of the glory of God, and God knew this that nobody can fulfill the law one hundred percent. 
the Bible also talks about that every sin, it, it, it doesn't matter what you do um, it, as a sin. They're all, it's, it's a sin. A sin is sin. It's, um, it doesn't, there's no lesser, greater, whatever. It's sin is sin. So, um, in saying that, even if we do 99% right, we do that 1% wrong, we still have to pay the consequence. So, God, that's why we need to be saved because God loves us so much. John 3.16 says that God loved us all so dearly, so truly, so much that instead of just like, you know, he could have just destroyed us and I guess started over whatever. I mean, God can do anything he wants. He could have just did something like that, but he didn't. He gave his one and only begotten son who we know is Jesus Christ and Jesus is without sin he is absolutely perfect and um, but yet and by the way he's God manifested in the son form so he's absolutely perfect he was at the right hand of God and he is again at the right hand of God but he came here to earth and became a human, um, conceived in the Holy Spirit. So he was still um, perfect. He, he was still without sin. He wasn't born like us in sin nature. But he did become like us in flesh. He became a human, human body. And he took on uh, torture and crucifixion and died with all the sins that I will have ever committed and that I ever will commit with all the sins that you have ever or ever will commit every single sin that each and every one of us has and ever will commit they were all put on Jesus they were all all, all the curses and all the sin it was put on Jesus even though he did none of them he took it he took what we deserve, which was our punishment and our consequence, and he took it on him. And he died for us. And his blood shed was the sacrifice in our place. So that instead of having to have eternal punishment and eternal death, he took that eternal punishment and eternal death. And he took it away from us. And he wiped every sin clean. Every sin that we will ever commit and that we have, have ever committed. He wiped it all clean. And now we are able to be reconciled through Jesus back to God, the Father. So now we can be back together with the Father. And Jesus on the third day resurrected again into life. So right now, and he, he ascended into heaven, and he's at the right hand of God right now. So right now, Jesus is alive. So he conquered death. And in that, he also promises us that as his followers, we will live eternal life in paradise with him. Um, so it's amazing because we don't deserve the sacrifice that he gave um, that he gave for us on our behalf and it is through him that we are able to be saved from our eternal punishment and death that we absolutely deserve we will never have to face it because he loves us so endlessly and unconditionally he loves us and he gave his own life and God the Father gave Jesus his own son for us and that is it is through him it is through faith in Jesus that we have that eternal life um, so here are some scriptures that go over Jesus's sacrifice and the fact that Jesus is our Savior that's John 3 16 John 10 11 Matthew 20 28 first Peter 3 18 first John 1 9 first John 2 verse 2 Acts 4 12 and Isaiah 53 chapter 5 so um, again going back on the law because we couldn't fulfill everything 
that would make us perfectly righteous. Um, we, God knew Jesus could, and Jesus did, and, and Jesus actually talks about fulfilling the law. So Jesus said, you know, he didn't come here to destroy the law. He actually fulfilled it because he was able to. He was so um, perfect that he was able to do that. And because he was, we are seen through his sacrifice. So we are, we are seen as righteous in God's eyes. Once we become saved and, and followers of Jesus, we are, we are no longer seen as sinners. We're no longer seen as, seen as flawed in God's eyes. We are seen righteous, even though we still live in this, um, this fleshly body, this corrupt world, and we do still sin. Um, it is not, it's not, it's not our nature anymore because when we are saved we become a new creation as the Bible says and therefore we're seen we're we die with Jesus sacrifice in our in our resurrected with his resurrection and so therefore we are seen through him and his sacrifice and because he's he's absolutely perfect and righteous that's how we're seen in God's eyes we're not seen as sin is sinners anymore we're seen as righteous in God's eyes and it's just amazing so um in in Matthew 5 10 I'm sorry 17 Matthew 5 17 and Galatians 2 16 talk about Jesus fulfilling the law in our place so um so let's talk a little bit more about what actual salvation is about what it is um, is it's actually the most important decision that you'll ever make is to give your life to Jesus um, and be saved through him. The reason is, well, there's many reasons, but of course this is going to affect not just this lifetime, but your whole eternal life. Because once you are saved, you are given that, um, you are given that eternal life through Jesus. So even though we die in our fleshly bodies in this corrupt world, um, when Jesus resurrects us, we are going to be living in paradise for eternity. So becoming saved is the most important decision you will literally ever make to make to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior is the most important decision you ever make. Um, so when you're talking about being saved or um, you know thinking even considering about um, accepting Jesus as your Savior and Lord, of all, it's very, it's something to take very, very seriously. Um, and, and like I said before, you, you become a completely new creation in spirit. So, in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21, Colossians 3, 9 through 10, and Galatians 2, verse 20, are all great scriptures that talk about when you become saved, you literally become a new spirit. Um, I'm sorry, a new creation in spirit. And therefore, you um, you completely change, and you are one hundred percent different. You're you're you are marked with the seal um, of the Holy Spirit, and so becoming saved is is a very amazing, the most amazing, and at the same time the most important decision you'll ever make. And it's a true commitment to God to become for Him to to accept him, I mean, as your savior and as Lord of, of your life. So, um, let's talk about how to actually get saved because, um, there's two verses, uh, scriptures that I want to talk about how to get saved because, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of things that people say, oh, you have to do this, oh, you, you know, they have standards and this and that, or saying a prayer, and it's, it's, it's sad because I've even heard people that they'll say it, but they don't really know what they're saying, or they don't believe in what they're actually saying, so um, let's revert to the Bible, because we really trust what the Bible teaches, and let's see what the Bible says about actually how do you get saved and in Acts 16 29 through 31 um, is one is the first scripture that I'm going to read to you right now so it says 
the jail the jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas then he brought them out and asked sirs what must I do to be saved and they replied believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household so that's the first scripture and and what did they tell him they said to believe in the Lord Jesus now the second scripture is going to be Romans 10 9 through 10 and this reads if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved for it is by believing in your heart that you made right with God and it is or are justified and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved so what do these two scriptures tell us about how to be saved? Well, the first one says to believe in Jesus. And again, in, in Romans, it says, believe in your heart um, that God raised Jesus from the dead and declare that Jesus is the Lord. And by professing, by believing in your heart, you are made right and um, with God. And, and by declaring with your mouth, you're... You, you are saved by your faith. So it's like um, in Genesis when when God made Abraham righteous. Uh, I'm sorry, Abraham was made righteous through his faith in God. Well, it is through our faith in Jesus by believing in Jesus that Jesus is the Son of God. That He did come here. He died for our sins. He's forgiven us our sins. And that God raised him from the dead. And he's alive right now. And that he is the Lord of all. The absolute sovereign. So it is by believing that in Jesus that we are made righteous. Um, people, you know, the Bible says that Jesus didn't come to condemn. We are already condemned because we are already born in a sin nature and we already are sinners. So of course we already are condemned if we never come to know Jesus and we never um, we never come to know Jesus and and accept him as our Savior as, as a sacrifice on our part we can never be um, we won't you know we we can't be saved so it is through knowing Jesus and accepting him believing who he is and accepting him as the uh, as our savior that we are saved from that condemnation so i also want to share with you what faith is um and the bible actually talks about it in hebrews 11 1 and i'll read it to you because um you know some people say well i believe in jesus and it's funny because in the bible it even says you know even the even the demons know jesus is real they believe Jesus is they know Jesus but that that that's not the same belief as believing as as in putting faith in Jesus because do demons follow Jesus do they love him do they obey God no they don't so what does it actually mean to believe in Jesus by putting faith in him well in Hebrews 11 1 it says that faith shows the reality of what we hope for and it's the evidence in things we cannot see so in other words, it's saying that even though um, even though there's no evidence, you have the absolute belief. In, in fact, you, it's like you know it. And there's no doubt whatsoever in your heart. You absolutely know it, and you don't need evidence to see it. You believe it anyway. That's faith. So even though... You know, we, we can't see Jesus or feel him. Like, he's not he's not tangibly right here like you and I are. But he is he is real. And you putting your faith in him and who everything he is and what the Bible says about him, that is putting your faith in him and believing him and accepting him. When you accept him and you proclaim it, again, declaring it, Jesus, you are Lord and you are and you are my savior and I accept your sacrifice I accept you as my savior and my lord over my life and over everything 
when you declare that and you believe it too and put faith in your heart truly, genuinely, that's how you become saved. And in, it, the Bible talks about repentance. And repentance, is, it means that you're changing, um, you're, turning a, you're turning a different way. You're changing um, your direction. So even though we were sinful at one time, uh, if you have a repentant heart, you want to change and turn, you want to turn completely to doing good and, and righteousness. So when you truly have a repentant heart and you truly believe in God, I mean, uh, yeah, and believe in Jesus and, and, and declare that he is Lord and Savior over your life, that's how you become saved. So um, I really just wanted to express that to you all because, like I said, there's a lot of people that may claim that they're saved and they really, they may not actually be sure of it. Um, or there's people that think they are, but it takes so much more than just believing you know, okay, I do believe God exists, but do you actually believe that um, in what Jesus did for you, and do you accept his sacrifice? It goes into that. So, um, so the next thing I want to talk about um, with being saved is, is baptism, because when we become saved, there is ba there's two baptisms um, that we are needing to we are needing to do baptism in water and baptism in Holy Spirit so baptism in water is actually a symbol um, of what it's a resemblance of what's happening to you when you become saved so when you um, are baptized in water and you submerge down into the water that is a symbolization of you um, being buried so all your all your old self and the the sinful nature and the, the old bad evil um, you know nature and an old person is all dying with with Jesus's death so it's it's a symbolization of you if that you know us as our former sin nature dying with Jesus's death and when you come back in up from the water that's a resemblance of you being resurrected in Jesus's resurrection resurrection and all your sins are gone washed away you're made clean you're a new person and um, and that's what baptism in water represents and it's so important we do that and even Jesus was baptized in water um, but the second one I want to talk about is baptism in Holy Spirit because this baptism in the Holy Spirit is absolutely necessary. It's absolutely you need it. Um, you can't walk a life. You can't walk a Christian life without the Holy Spirit with you. Jesus gave us Holy Spirit when He ascended back to heaven. He actually gave us Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit is called our Advocate. He's He's our Helper. He's our Comforter. He is the Holy Spirit guides us in our walk with God and he draws us closer to God he gives us knowledge about God you know you need Holy Spirit absolutely and you're born again through um, you're born again in spirit so it's Holy Spirit that make that that is washing us clean and, and, and guiding us and um, making us a new creation every day we we are we are daily progressing towards righteousness in our in our ways and it's Holy Spirit that helps us to do that because we um, you know we have our habits our old habits our, our bad habits um, and then of course we have temptation we have fleshly desires and just all these things right we still live in a in a, in a corrupt world and it's impossible again to not sin because we're not perfect in this fleshly body and we're, this world is not perfect either. So it's absolutely important that we have Holy Spirit to keep us focused on God. And, and, and it's through Holy Spirit that God actually gives us power to live uh, holy in the way that he wants us to walk. And um, so you can find more out more about baptism and Holy Spirits in these scriptures here. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 1 Peter 1, 23. Acts 2.38 and John 3.3-8. Three, three 
So um, the other thing I wanted to talk about when being saved is that is the subject of grace and the subject of no condemnation. So the reason I'm bringing these two things up just before I even get started on them is because I feel like a lot of people, and I was one of them, when we get saved, there are the these religious doctrines that want to put fear in people. You know, they're not actually spreading the truth of God's love and, and the gospel because they're really actually just condemning you. And it's it's the whole the whole point of, of what happens in this situation is that we we think, oh now that I'm saved, I have to meet a certain standard so that I can be righteous. And if I can't do that, then I'm not good enough to be called God's child. Well so that what that is doing is promoting self righteousness and self righteousness has nothing to do with God because it's not again whose righteousness is it through that we are saved it's not ours it's Jesus's because we were never able to fulfill the law in the first place so trying to earn our salvation through our own righteousness will never happen because and the Bible says that too Jesus is the only name that can be that can that we can be saved through. It's not our own name, it's not anybody else. Only Jesus and it's only through Jesus' righteousness that we're saved. So once you get saved, don't fall into the lie that you have to be a certain standard of perfection because of this and that. No. Yes, we are supposed to be holy and we're supposed to do good deeds. We're supposed to obey Jesus. Jesus says, if you love me, obey my teachings and, and the Bible teaches us how to live holy what's godly you know what we should do to live a Christian life and um, that's also another video a Bible sermon that I have on my channel here um, but yes we're supposed to live in a holy manner but that doesn't mean that we're saved because we're because of the, those things. We can't earn salvation. It's already, once you accept Jesus as your Savior, He already paid for it. So you're already saved. You're already saved. You're only doing those things because we're supposed to live to please God. And we want to. If you truly love God, you're going to want to live good. And that's how we live and that's how people know us and, and that's how we bring glory to God is by doing good things. But again, you can't earn it. So the, the Bible talks about faith without works is dead, which means, if you, like I said earlier, if you say, oh, I believe Jesus, but you're not living in a Christian manner, you're just, you're like almost comparing, almost compared to like the demons that just say, oh, I know Jesus is real, but do they actually obey him or respect him or anything? No. But in the same way, works without faith is dead too. You can't work in, toward salvation. You can't earn it. Um, salvation is a gift of grace. And a gift can't be earned. It's already, it's just given. You just accept it. And so, you accept it with faith. So, um, in grace, meaning undeserved kindness, we don't deserve it and we can't earn it. We can't do anything to deserve it. It's just, it's just God's kindness and His love that He's given us. Um, so just keep that in mind and um, some more scriptures on going on that subject is Ephesians 2 8 through 9 James 2 14 through 25 Genesis 15 verse 6 and Romans chapter 4 and also um, so the second thing I mentioned was that there's no condemnation and it kind of ties in with this because again there's a lot of um, you know, when, when it's, it's so easy for us to be like, oh my goodness, I shouldn't be doing that anymore. And every time we sin, we start condemning ourselves. Or some people start condemning other people. And that's where you get the whole self-righteous, holier-than-thou kind of thing. Where it's like, oh, I'm glad. I, I, 
I tithe and pray all day, every day, and this person doesn't, and you should be ashamed of yourself, you know. Whoa. So let's talk about condemnation, because the Bible says that before, it, the only condemnation is when you don't accept Jesus as your Savior and Lord. If you have accepted Jesus as your Savior and Lord, or if that other person has accepted Jesus truly as their Savior and Lord, they are not going to be condemned, and you are not going to be condemned, because the only way to do that is to reject Jesus. And there's many scriptures that I'll mention in just a second that talk about this exact subject. And it's so important that we know this, because I fell into that lie, too. And, and I kept condemning myself, condemning myself. And after a while, you get so tired of it, you decide just to leave and stop trying to be Christian, stop trying to follow God, because you get so discouraged. So that's why it's so important to understand this truth about there's no condemnation in those who already have Jesus as their Savior, because um, because you're saved. Jesus saved you. He already died for every sin that you're ever going to do and that you ever have done. And there's nothing that's going to pull you away from Him. Um, and so, again, you know, be careful because because you don't want to you don't want to live in that constant conviction or you don't want to become self-righteous and, and try and con condemn other people now yes the Bible teaches that you know if a brother meaning another person that you know is in Christ or even yourself you know the Holy Spirit can convict you like oh you know you shouldn't have done that you knew that that's ungodly there's a difference from convicting and, and correcting than condemning, like saying, hey, okay, you know that God doesn't like liars, so you know you should tell the truth. And that's very different from, you know, God's going to send you to hell and all this stuff. Say, you know, that's, that's, not, that's not true because, I mean, ultimately, no matter what's going to happen to the other person, that's between them and God, and you as well. Whatever happens to you is between you and God. And, and God is the ultimate judge. Jesus is the ultimate judge. And therefore, you, you have no right to condemn someone else anyway. And don't condemn yourself. You know how much mercy and grace that Jesus has for you. He loves you. He loved you. It, it, the Bible says that Jesus died for us, meaning you and me, for all of us while we were yet sinners so even though we were still sinning think about all the people that were sitting there while he was on the cross and just mocking him and just laughing at him while we were still sinning he died for us he didn't wait till we were all you know wanted to be good and this and that he died for us right then and there while we were still sinners while we still you know all of us and so his mercy and grace is just endless. His, his kindness and understanding, it's endless. And it's unconditional as well. Unconditional. And that means that, you know, we're never too far from God. You know, don't ever feel like you've done something so bad that God just, hate, you know, is mad at you and just doesn't love you anymore or is going to punish you now or whatever. No. He has such grace to you. Yes, he says, you know, don't sin. If you're deliberately out there sinning, you know you're doing something wrong. And, again, you know, that's not, that's not living godly, and that is wrong. And, and, the, and the Bible also talks about that, too. Okay, so now we have this grace. Does that mean, you know, Paul confronted the people about that. Does that mean, oh, that we can live in sin now because we're, we don't have punishment anymore? No. No, that doesn't mean that it's okay to go sinning now. But all that means is that you have, you have the grace that when you do sin, because again, we're not perfect, and because we're caught up still in this fleshly form, and this, you know, it's still imperfect world, and imperfect bodies, and imperfect minds, and so and such, you know, it's like, we're still going to sin. And, and, doesn't mean that we sh we we should sin or that we can sin and just get away with it. It's not about that. It's about we are accidentally going to sin and 
you know, we still are going to be every day trying to become a, a holier person every day. And so Jesus has grace on us and, and, and kindness and mercy on us that we are still going to be sinning sometimes. So please don't think that, you know, don't condemn yourself, but also don't let yourself get the other misconception of, oh, it's okay to sin now, because that's not, that's not the case either. So um, some scriptures to go over that would be 1 Peter 1, 3, Romans 6, 3 through 5, Romans 5, 12 through 15, 2 Corinthians 5, 19 through 21, Romans 8, chapter 1, John 3, 18, and John 3, 6, uh, 36, and as well as Romans 10, 4 through 10, Titus 3, verse 5, Galatians 3, 23 through 25, and Romans 6, 1 through 14. Um, and so just to finish this out, um, I want to talk about what, what we are free from when we get saved. So the Bible says that the one who Jesus frees is free indeed. And it's absolutely true and it's amazing. It's amazing. So first, we're free from sin. This isn't found in Romans 6, 6 7. We're free from sin. What does that actually mean? Well, because we're made a new creation, we're no longer seen through God's eyes as sinners. We're not, we're not bound to that, that sinfulness. We're not bound to that, you know, we're not bound to even, we're not slaves to our sin. The Bible talks about that too. We're not, we're not servants to our own sins. So what that means is that we have the authority now. We have the power over sin. We have the power to overcome those sins now. We, we don't serve those sins anymore. We, we are able to overcome those sins. We're free from sin. And we're free from the punishment that sin brings us. We're free from death, eternal death, not just, it's not, uh, this is our first death. When we die here on earth, that's just temporary because Jesus is going to re resurrect us into eternal life forever. It's the second death that's, that's the eternal death, and um, that's what we will face if we don't accept Jesus as our Savior and Lord except the sacrifice he gave for us to save us from that death. Um, and But when we, when we become saved through Jesus Christ, we are free from that. That means we get to live an eternal life and happiness and joy and beauty and light and, and peace and love and paradise. And that's found in John 5, 29, John 11, 25 through 26. Jesus conquered death. And he conquered the, the, this world, too. He conquered all this world, John 16, 33. So we're free from all this evil in this world. It doesn't mean that we're not going to suffer sometimes. It doesn't mean we won't feel the conflict of the world. Again, we still live in this world, and we still live in our imperfect bodies. But it doesn't have a hold on our soul anymore. It doesn't have to. Because God, Jesus already conquered those things. And when we set our sight on him as his followers, we overcome those things that we were born doing, born, learn, you know, taught to be, to be like, and, and just overcome all this evil. And it doesn't have, an, it doesn't have to have an effect on us like it used to, you know, um, like it's easy for, you know, if somebody's mean to someone else that person that was bullied could potentially become a bully because that's what they were used to and they felt like survival of the fittest kind of thing. And I'm not trying to go into any subject about survival of the fittest in itself. I'm just saying it's 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 like that's that we're not bound to a certain reaction anymore. We can overlook the things that are seen and the things that are normal and we we can look into a different we have a different nature about us so 
even though we can get, you know, it's kind of like when Paul, you know, he was punished and even tortured while he was talking, you know, preaching about the gospel. And he still had so much joy. And he just always praised and rejoiced in God despite that. And that's what I mean by we have our freedom from the world. And that's also in Galatians 1, 4. You know, so freedom from all this evil and all the all this evil in this world. And including the devil because who do you think rule, runs the world right now? The devil, Satan does. And um, him and his dark, you know, dominion in his you know the powers of darkness and all that they we're free from all that too and um i think that is just that is an amazing relief because if you're anybody that comes from the dark um dark ways um or have affiliations with demonic powers um or spirits to be able to overcome them and just, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. Jesus is just a true savior. And, um, so yeah, we're free from the devil. We're free from our adversary and his, you know, his followers. So in 1 John 3, 8 and Hebrews 2, 14 through 15, it talks about that. And, um, just to close out, I just want you to know that, you know, I want you to remember this that once you actually truly truly genuinely get saved like you truly are repentant you make you know you accept Jesus as your savior and lord you accept the sacrifice he gave for you and you live for him truly nothing can snatch you from his hands and you know there are going to be times that we might stray you know like again we're not we're still not in a perfect body or anything we're you know in, or in a perfect world so sometimes we're going to make mistakes and sometimes we might end up straying and walking away and let me tell you though that will never separate you from Jesus and it will never separate you from God he will always call you back the, the bible talk Jesus actually talks about how the one shepherd and he is our shepherd goes and finds you know he leaves the 99 sheep to find his one lost one just the one lost one he will go look for that sheep no matter where it's at until he finds it and brings it back home and that's what Je that's who Jesus is he's our shepherd so even though if we stray he will go and find us and bring us back home so I just want you to know that and that's in John 10 28 and Matthew 18 12 through 14 and also a beautiful scripture in Romans 8 31 through 39 it talks about nothing can separate us from the love of God and that is just absolutely wonderful because there's so you know his his love is unconditional and you can't it is like so super rare to ever find such unconditional love in the first place in this world um, and then God's love is just even more than any love we understand so there's nothing that can separate you no no powers no principalities no angels no demons no distances no nothing nothing can separate you from God's love he loves you absolutely after all he gave his only son Jesus and Jesus gave his only life just for you and just for me and just for all of us and he just wants us to believe in him and follow him and obey him and accept him as Lord and Savior of all so I just want to encourage you that if you are considering accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life to be saved I, I encourage you to because it's the best thing that will ever happen to you ever he is the greatest thing and yes he promises us eternal life for eternity but also in this in our lifetime here right now once you make Jesus Savior it just changes everything like you actually come to life you come to life it's not about finding joy and putting it in your heart it's like you already got joy in your heart and it's flowing out and it's the same with life life is already in there and it's just flowing and it's amazing and so, yes, if you're considering becoming saved, please do. And if you're already saved, 
I, I hope that you learned something new today. And I really pray that you will share this with everyone you know. And I just thank you so much for listening in. And, and I just pray that Jesus guides you where you're meant to go. Thank you.